Hello everybody and welcome to Tutorial Tuesday. Now I was supposed to be doing markers today, but something came up and so I'm going to give you something different and a little bit faster to learn. Also, thank you to my patrons. You guys are paying for my internet bill right now. It's amazing. <laughs> so what we're going to learn today is how to shade to show volume. It's actually pretty simple and it has to do with the grid mapping video I made a while ago. So let's just jump into it. I'll show you what I mean. Let's take a look at this guy right now. I'm using Photoshop today because I'm lazy. Also because I have to do this quickly. So obviously a photograph will show the volume of a body, but why does it show the volume? Obviously you have different tones, but if you turn this completely black and white and just did like an outline, you're not really seeing the volume at all. You're just seeing the external shape. Now, if you go to my grid mapping video, you'll see how I go over this. It's a long tutorial because it's one of my old ones, but essentially what I would want you to do, if you're very new to this, take your figure, and first make some lines going horizontally around him. Now, even if we turn off the original photo reference, this is already showing volume in the shape of the muscle because the lines are curving over around the different bumps. We can accentuate this by adding vertical lines. Now, this character has volume. And even if we turn these off, go to the outline, don't have much volume there, right? Once we turn these on, suddenly the character has visual volume because of this grid mapping. So how are you going to use this to shade? Well, let me show you, then I'll show you a bunch of examples. Then I'll give you an artist that you should look at because they do it amazingly and to a seriously advanced level. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to make another layer without doing some serious shading that would make it look photorealistic. What you should start doing is shading with the lines of the body. And these are the lines of the body. These are the red and blue lines we created. So what you're going to do when you make your marks, you're going to be driving them up and around the muscle like this, just like that. And you can do it over here too. See this bump of muscle shade around to wrap around that piece of anatomy. Do it on the arm, just like this, following those lines. And then you wrap the other way because right now when we're looking at this person, we're looking at them directly on. So our horizon line, our line of reference is like right over here. If we add some, just come on you. If we add some lines of perspective, that means that zoom, zoom, zoom. He's sitting, he's sitting on like this as it gets closer and closer to us. And same thing up and down. You have to calculate what is wrapping away from you and what is wrapping toward you. Now, I know this looks like a hot mess. This is just the lines of perspective. Remember that. And because of that, if we turned his arm into a tube, one end of the tube would be over here. And then the other one would be wrapping more like around this way. See how I did that with the lines. This one's wrapping this way away from you. And this one is wrapping this way away from you in the other direction, because this right here is your center line. And if you drew a cylinder from a center perspective, as if your eyeball was like right over here, then it would be two lines like this, one pushing that way and one pushing that way. And you have your center line and then things are starting to wrap away more and more dramatically as you get to the edges. That's exactly what's happening with the rest of the body right now. And so that's how you show the perspective with your shading lines. This is especially dramatic when you go to an arm that's pointing away from you a lot like that. You can add these little lines coming down under here and so on and so forth. Like around here, I would definitely curve them. Around the calf, I would curve them very dramatically. And you just keep putting in these lines to define the shape of the body. And that's why I want, like if you're starting out, try doing the gridding thing first, especially if you have a digital tablet or maybe tracing paper. If you're doing it traditionally, you can use tracing paper. And now we're only doing this in a very small bit of lines. What happens when you have like a lot of lines? Let me show you that. This is from one of my books. You can see how I wrapped things in the direction of the body, especially even with the mist. I wrapped the shading in the direction of the mist itself. There we go down by the ankle in the direction of the ankles curving in the direction of the calf. Even on this guy in the direction of where his creepy weird muscles are wrapping. Everything around here is in the direction it's supposed to be, which gives the character dimension, despite the fact that this is not that complicated of an image. Here's another good example. Even on this tiny, tiny character, 
the lines go in the direction that wraps around her body. And a lot on Yedelon here. It's wrapping all along the direction of his body, even the shading on these little, like, little rippling muscles over here. You can do it for clothing to show the direction the clothing is going. Here we have it very dramatically to show some of the muscles along the back of the arm, and especially around the leg. Suddenly the leg is not flat anymore. It has its lines that are being forced into your vision, which makes you think that it's a 3D image. Even in a more complicated picture like this, we got it on the arm, we got it on this Magi's leg over here, the neck of the dragon, even along the blade and the way the blade is aiming, it really, really helps driving it. Now this is a very, these are very dramatic examples. You can even do it with clouds for God's sake. Look, suddenly the clouds have volume just because I forced the lines to curve around their, you know, curve around whatever shape they have. You can do it with the scale, shade in the direction the scale is moving. You can use these shading lines to force perspective. Look at, uh, ignore his arm, because that that's a very dumb anatomy of an arm, but look at the direction I used to shade the walls. It makes a very, very forced perspective. It's a very useful technique. It's so freaking useful. <laughs> so what if you take it to extremes, though? What if you want to do a super duper detailed piece of art? There's an artist I want you guys to research. Now, if you're younger, there are going to be boobies and there are going to be butts. This is a high-end artist who just draws whatever the heck he wants and gets away with it. Check out this piece of art. See, his shading isn't necessarily around over the top, like a grid mapping, but the shading is in line with the movement of this entire hand and foot. Isn't that gorgeous? And see, it works. It shows the volume of the entire piece. They did it a little bit around the toes. Take a look at the toes. See how they shaded around the top of the toes to show that they have a volume that's coming towards you? It's exactly what I'm talking about, but this is a very advanced application. Let me see if I can go through and find other ones that don't have naked ladies. This here is an excellent example. Look at the direction of the shading around the chin, around the bottom of the cheeks. Look at the lips. Look, especially like right over there, right over there, your perspective is being forced just by the way, just by the direction of the shading of the lines. And this is a pretty darn realistic looking drawing at this point. These lines are extremely fine. You are taking this over here and turning it into this. This is what happens when you spend hours on it and really step it up. And see, amazing volume, your eye is guided, your eye knows the direction. I've said that too many times, I'm repeating myself. Here's another amazing example, and the last one I'm going to leave you with, because it's starting to get over 10 minutes. The lines are going along the top of the arm in perspective. Yes, again, I'm going to keep saying that over and over again, because this is an extremely useful technique. And then they're going lengthwise. So both of the grid lines, you could literally hatch in the grid lines just from looking at this arm. This is amazingly well done. I'm going to link this artist down below so you can go look at their work, because it's very easy to look at their work and learn from it. So I know that's faster than usual and less in depth, but hopefully it helped. I'm also trying to spin up the style and make sure I'm doing shorter videos for people. This entire last week has been a little bit hectic for me after my friend died. So that's the reason that videos are being delayed right now or not as long as they should be. And honestly, thank you to everybody who sent in a memorial piece for Jordan. There are about 250 to 300 emails that I'm trying to go through. The feedback has been incredible. I, I could not have expected you guys to help this much. And I really, really, really am looking forward to giving it to his family, because it, maybe at least it'll help them a little bit. And with critiques, I still need to cut the cord on critiques until I can do more. I'm probably going to be doing them as live streams, because the editing for those videos takes way, way too long. So yeah, we're, we're working on things. We're figuring out how to do all of this, because now there's a bunch of you and I need to teach all of you, and it's awesome. <laughs> And for those of you who asked for a commission, right now I have to cut commissions short because I haven't been able to turn them in on time. And I don't want people to be waiting like an extra three weeks after the due date, just because I have so much stuff to do right now and I don't know how to balance my schedule along with, you know, obvious other reasons that are making it difficult for me to work. So as per usual, you guys make sure to drink your water, get your sleep, believe in yourself, and chase your dreams. I will see you on Thursday. Bye-bye.